Welcome to the Sacred and the Profane podcast. I'm your host, Shannon McNally. We will be speaking with elders, musical luminaries, medicine people, and session players about everyday magic and the past, present, and future of heartfelt and soulful real music. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, this is Shannon McNally, and I have the great pleasure today of speaking with Miss Emily Harris. How are you? I'm good. I'm in this beautiful place called Blackberry Farm doing a benefit uh, for a place called Crossroads. And I'm here with your friend, I think, Rodney Crowell. Oh, yes. Gil, and we're having fun doing a sort of a guitar pull and raising money uh, for a good cause. So um, it's nice to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we came here today. To, we're going to talk about Waylon Jennings, an old friend of yours. Um, I have uh, been thinking about him a lot lately and did this project. And one of the reasons that it really appealed to me was I'd never heard a woman sort of sing any of that stuff or, or sort of reinterpret him. Um, Good songs and great grooves. And uh, I, I, I think it's a, a wonderful record that you've done and shining, just to shine a light on Waylon Jennings. I mean, I may be prejudiced, but I don't think there'll be, ever be anyone to fill his shoes um, and miss him a lot. I, I didn't know Waylon that well, but he was just in the periphery. Um, although I actually did, he actually sang on a record of mine and I'm really proud of that. Yes. So um, do you remember the first time you met him or what he was like when, you know, I, in pre preparing for this, I was trying to remember. I know the first time I saw him, I was as a fan. I was uh, um, playing, trying to play country music in Washington D.C. You know, waiting for something to happen for me or whatever. And I had recently become turned on to country music through uh, working with Graham Parsons. Um, but um, uh, Waylon came to town, not to D.C., but to the, the outlying areas. You know, in Maryland, where there was country music, because country music was still you know, not really accepted. It was kind of like this ugly stepchild of music or something. Uh -huh. For a lot of people, a lot of people in my generation who came to it late uh, before we realized the poetry and the power of it, you know. But I had become a Waylon Jennings fan and uh, went out there to this club, went out there. And, you know, there's just nothing like the first time you see that man walk on stage. The thing about Waylon that he was always like the grown up. Do you know what I mean? There was something about his, he had this uh, amazing, um, um, well, presence on stage, but also uh, he looked so serious and, and, you know, like almost dangerous. And yet he had a great sense of humor. It was really funny. And he t always took the mickey out of himself too. Yeah. Um, it, was, it, it was delightful to know him and the few times I was around him. And as I say, um, I was doing this song uh, that was written by Paul Siebel, uh, who I knew from my New York folk music days, a song called Spanish Johnny that I'd always wanted to record, but uh, I, I just need And Spanish Johnny is a song about an outlaw, fictitious outlaw. But I knew that I needed Waylon's voice. And, uh, and even though we didn't do a video, his presence, you know, his presence on that song is what what gave it uh, some somehow its power. I wish we could have done more stuff together. Yeah. Oh, I'll bet. Um, but you know, you you used the word that uh, really caught my my ear. That word, adult. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he's a grown up somehow. I can't even imagine Waylon as a little kid. Yeah. No, there's something. That's a really I, cute, really um, uh, getting into a lot of trouble, little kid. But. Um, there was just a certain presence. Maybe it has to do with everyone who's maybe 10 years or so older than you, you know, in the arts, you, you kind of look to them as the adults, the people who went ahead of you paving the way and all of that. But even if you take that all away, he just had a certain presence about him. I mean, I, of course, I feel the same way about, uh, about uh, Johnny Cash and all the highwaymen that, you know, but there was something about Waylon, uh, his voice, his presence, uh, the, the groove that he had on those songs. Um, 
just uh, he occupied a space unto himself that um, I don't think uh, anyone else uh, with their own, uh, um, you know, body of work. I think we, we, we all b borrow from other people's uh, styles and body of work. But um, yeah, he, he just, you, I guess what I'm trying to say, whenever Waylon Jennings' record came on the radio, you knew exactly who it was. You didn't think, oh, is this so-and-so or is it so-and-so? You knew who it was. Yes, it's, um, I feel exactly the same. I mean, I grew up with him sort of being ubiquitous, you know, it was, yeah. you know, and I grew up on Long Island. It wasn't like I, even for being a country artist in the 70s when I was little, um, yeah. and, you know, he was always present, you know, and I always kind of knew what he was. Um, but that thing about being grown, being an adult, you know, whether it's from a different <laughs> or not. It was just I, always my feeling about him. God, he's so grown up. Uh. Well, that sense of self, I, I, I think that you just kind of helped me figure out like what it was that I was, uh, you know, I mean, you know, when you sing other people's stuff, it's a little bit of dress up. It's a little bit of like, well, how do I walk like that? Or what, what can I borrow from that? And what, what part of that is calling me to, I, want. I think there's a certain attitude in his music that we can all benefit from, you know, uh, and, and that, that great beat and that, uh, oh, all those wonderful songs. It's, it's funny, there's a, a, I don't know if you listen to, um, you know, Outlaw Country and Sirius Radio, and you could almost call it the, uh, almost call it the, the, the Waylon Jennings station. <laughs> they play it uh, so much, and, and every time I, I enjoy, I enjoy hearing him. But uh, I do miss him. I, we, we could use his voice today. But I think it's great that you're shining a light on his work and saying, um, you know, like, like his songs, they're not just for the men. <laughs> right. He talks about the universal issues, but, you know, with, with a bit of a swagger. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Do you think they make sense, you know, come from women? I mean, does it, I mean, the pronouns aside, do, does that swagger... <laughs> That well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I, I, I because you, you didn't change the pronouns, right? No. So in, for I, me, a little bit. Uh, I uh, a little bit, but a little for little. me, you were doing, for me, it's a tribute record. And I, I, I actually love tribute records uh, because it makes you, you know, so many of us, so many of artists, I, not so much me because I'm more, more of an interpreter, although I do write some of my own songs. But um, when a person who is known for writing their own material, there are always certain idiosyncrasies that an artist has in the way that they write, the way they phrase. Right. Um, but, okay, so when you take somebody else's song that has been written through that same style and idiosyncrasies, and so you have to interpret it by putting your own idiosyncrasies into it. And, and I always find it uh, fascinating to see how someone tackles somebody else's song. I, uh, that's one of the reasons I actually was a fan of, of uh, American Idol. <laughs> I love to see what people, how people sing other people's songs. Well, that's, that's the beauty of the song. That's how the song um, survives and moves on and remains relevant. I guess. And I think we can all absorb whether it's obvious, whether, you know, we kind of absorb the styles that are powerful and speak to us almost by osmosis, almost by transubstantiation, don't we? They affect us in ways that might not be visible to someone else, you know, because as someone who has copied so many people over the years to learn to sing, no one is ever going to sound like anyone else, but um, I think that styles and, and music changes and grows because of the influences that we have, because how we're affected by other people, other, other artists that, that move us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I agree. <laughs> I, agree. <laughs> I hope I'm making sense. I, do, I sometimes do go off on a crazy tangent, but. No, that's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm here to hear your thoughts about it because, um, well, because you're one of my 
favorite, I mean, of all times, you know? Well, so, thank you. Oh, thank you. Goodness. And we both love Waylon, and, and aren't we glad that there was a Waylon? And we still I have. am. I am so glad. I am so glad, and I'm so glad that I got the opportunity to do this and um, just, I don't know, I mean, shed a little of that light. And I, hope well, I think that's it's going to be a great record. I hope it, it, it is out and for people to listen to and absorb and, and talk about. And, and then maybe there might be, it's hard to imagine, there might be people out there that, that don't, aren't not, are not aware of Waylon Jennings. That, that's kind of, just to say that out of my mouth, I think, how can that possibly be? But uh, we live in a culture that everything goes, you know, has such a short shelf life. Well, someone like Waylon, I mean, should uh, be on anybody who who loves any kind of music that's that has you know, um, something to to really say uh, should know about Waylon's music, and it should live forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I agree. I agree. Well, yeah, I'm hoping. I'm actually hoping on those people who never heard him before. Um, See, that that's good because all of us. You know, we have to, um, uh, we have to pass it on, you know, the music that we love and, um, and, and acknowledge who our influences were, uh, because none of us is created in a vacuum. You know, when I think about all the Joan Baez records I listen to and, you know, Dolly Parton and Buffy St. Marie and all that. Yeah. I mean, you know, you just, um, you have to be inspired. We, we are all on the shoulders, stand on the shoulders of those who came before us musically. Well, I, I don't know how to better sum it up than that. Um, I'm so grateful to you for taking the time to talk to me about this. And um, I, I don't know, I could uh, talk about it all day, of course, but um, <laughs> I don't want to keep you. I know you're, you're in the middle of doing stuff. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you, Shannon. And good luck with the record. And, oh, and thank you. One Waylon Jennings fans to another. All right.